wouldn't it be great if we could control the weather? I'm sure people have thought about this ever since there have been people having thoughts. But what are scientists thinking about this today? In this video, we'll look at the best understood case of weather control, that's making rain by seeding clouds. How is cloud seeding supposed to work? Does it work? And if it works, is it a good idea? That's what we'll talk about today. First things first, what is cloud seeding? Cloud seeding is a method for increasing precipitation, which is a fancy word for water that falls off the sky in any form, rain, snow, hail and so on. One seeds a cloud by spraying small particles into it, which encourages the cloud to shed precipitation. At least that's the idea. Cloud seeding does not actually create new clouds, it's just a method to get water out of already existing clouds. So you can't use it to turn a desert into a forest. The water needs to be in the air already. Cloud seeding was discovered, as so many things, accidentally. In 1946, a man named Vincent Schaeffer was studying clouds in a box in his laboratory, but it was too warm for his experiment to work. So he put dry ice into his cloud box, that's carbon dioxide frozen at about minus 80 degrees Celsius. He then observed that small grains of dry ice would rapidly grow to the size of snowflakes. Here he is in his own words. This cloud is made up of liquid water droplets. They are not snow crystals as yet. But by taking a tiny piece of dry ice such as this and scratching it so a few tiny fragments fall into the supercool cloud, long streaks develop just like the vapor trail from an airplane. These contain millions and millions of tiny submicroscopic snow crystals which grow very fast and assume exactly the same forms that natural snowflakes uh, show in an ordinary snowstorm. Schaeffer realized this happened because the water in the clouds was supercooled. That means below freezing point but still liquid. This is an energetically unstable state. If one introduces tiny amounts of crystals into a supercooled cloud, the water droplets will attach to the crystals immediately and freeze. So the crystals grow quickly until they are heavy enough to fall down. Schaefer saw this happening when sprinkles of solid dry ice fell into his box. He had seeded the first cloud. In the following years, he'd go on to test various methods of cloud seeding. Today, scientists distinguish two different ways of seeding clouds, either by growing ice crystals, as Schaeffer did, that's called glaciogenic seeding, or by growing water droplets, which is called hygroscopic seeding. The method that Schaeffer used is today more specifically called the glaciogenic static mode. Static because it doesn't rely on circulation within the cloud. There's also a glaciogenic dynamic mode, which works somewhat differently. In the dynamic mode, one exploits that the conversion of the supercooled water into ice releases heat, and that heat creates an updraft. This allows the seeds to reach more water droplets, so the cloud grows and eventually more snow falls. One of the substances commonly used for this is silver iodide, though there are a number of different organic and inorganic substances that have proved to work. For hygroscopic seeding, one uses particles that absorb water that serve as condensation seeds to turn water vapor into large drops that become rain. The substances used for this are typically some type of salt. Seeding clouds in a box in the laboratory is one thing. Seeding a real cloud, another thing entirely. To seed a real cloud, one either uses airplanes that spray the seeding particles directly into the cloud, or targets the cloud with a rocket which gives off the particles, or one uses a ground-based generator that releases the particles slowly mixed with hot air that rises up into the atmosphere. They do this, for example, in Colorado and other winter tourism areas and claim that it can lead to several inches more snow. But does it work? It's difficult to test if cloud seeding actually works. The issue is, as I said, seeding doesn't actually create clouds, it just encourages clouds to release snow or rain at a particular time and place. But how do you know if it wouldn't have rained anyway? 
After Schaefer's original work in the 1950s, the United States launched a research program on cloud seeding, and so did several other countries, including the UK, Canada, India and Australia. But evidence that cloud seeding works didn't come by for a long time, and so in the late 1980s, funding into this research area drastically declined. That didn't deter people from trying to seed clouds though. Despite the absence of evidence, quite a few winter spot areas use cloud seeding in an attempt to increase snowfall. But beginning around the turn of the millennium, interest in cloud seeding was revived by several well-funded studies in the United States, Australia, Japan and China, for just to name a few. Quite possibly this interest was driven by the increasing risk of drought due to climate change. And today, scientists have much better technology to figure out whether cloud seeding actually works. And so the new studies could finally deliver evidence that it does work. Some of the most convincing studies used radar measurements to detect ice crystals in clouds after a plane went through and distributed the seeds. This was done, for example, in a 2011 study in Australia and also in a 2018 study in the northern part of the United States. These radar measurements are a direct signature of seeding, glaciogenic seeding in this case. The researchers can tell that the ice crystals are caused by the seeding because the crystals that appear in the radar signal replicate the trajectory of the seeding plane downwind. From the radar measurements, they can also tell that the concentration of ice crystals is two to three orders of magnitude larger than those in neighboring not seeded areas. And they know that the newly formed ice crystals grow because the amount of radar signal that's reflected depends on the size of the particle. This and similar studies also contain several cross checks. For example, they seeded some areas of the clouds with particles that are known to grow ice crystals and others with particles that aren't expected to do that. And they detected ice formation only for the particles that act as seeds. They also checked that the resulting snowfall is really the one that came from the seeding. One can do this by analyzing the snow for traces of the substance used for seeding. Besides this, there are also about a dozen studies that evaluated statistically if there are changes in precipitation from the glaciogenic seeding. These come from research programs in the United States, Australia and Japan. To get statistics, they monitor the unseeded areas surrounding the seeded region as an estimation of the natural precipitation. It's not a perfect method, of course, but done often enough and for long enough periods, it gives a reasonable assessment for the increase of precipitation due to seeding. These studies typically found an increase in precipitation around 15% and estimated the probability that this increase happened just coincidentally with 5%. So, at least for the seeding of ice crystals, there's now pretty solid evidence that it works better than a rain dance. For the other types of seeding, it's still unclear whether it's efficient. Please check the information below the video for references to the papers. But is it a good idea? The world's biggest weather modification program is China's. The Chinese government employs an estimated 35,000 people to this end already and in December 2020 they announced they'll increase investments into their weather modification program. Now, as we have seen, cloud seeding isn't terribly efficient and for it to work the clouds have to be already there in the first place. Nevertheless, there's an obvious worry here. If some countries can go and make clouds rain off over their territory, that might leave less water for neighboring countries. And the bad news is, there aren't currently any international laws regulating this. Most countries have regulations for what you are allowed to spray into the air or how much. But cloud seeding is mostly legal. There is an international convention, the Environmental Modification Convention, that 78 states have signed, which prohibits the military and hostile use of environmental modification techniques. But this can't presently in any clear way be applied to cloud seeding. 
I think that now that we know cloud seeding does work, we should think about how to regulate it before someone actually gets good at it. Controlling the weather is an ancient dream, but thanks to Vincent Schaeffer, maybe it won't remain a dream forever. When he died in 1993, his obituary in the New York Times said, he was hailed as the first person to actually do something about the weather and not just talk about it. This video was sponsored by Audible. I'm the kind of person who loves to know a little bit about a lot of things. I'm also the kind of person who doesn't have a terrible lot of time. That's why I listen to audiobooks when I go running or when I'm cooking or when I'm sitting around waiting for someone who's late again. And Audible is the best provider for audiobooks. On Audible, I listen, for example, to A Beautiful Question by Frank Wilczek. And I'm now looking forward to his new title, Fundamentals, that was just released. As an Audible member, you get one audiobook per month free and you get full access to their Plus catalog, which has so many more offers like podcasts and guided fitness programs. To check out what they have to offer, go to audible.com slash Sabine or text Sabine to 500 500. The Audible app is free, simple to use and can be installed on all smartphones and tablets. With an Audible membership, you can download titles and listen offline anytime, anywhere. Once again, that's audible.com slash Sabine or text Sabine to 500 500. Audible has so many things to offer, you basically can't go wrong with it. Thanks for watching. See you next week.